Hello there and welcome to A Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at higher derivatives to warm us up for the uh, Maclaurin series chapters. So what are higher derivatives? Well it just means differentiates over and over and over again, the same function repetitively. So you'll be familiar with the notation for differentiation. Uh, you'll need to be able to find more and more derivatives. Unfortunately, the notation is pretty much what you'd expect. If you've got the function y to start with and you differentiate it, you'll get dy by dx. Differentiate it again and you've probably seen the second derivative a couple of times before. It's doing something like finding a stationary point. You you know this notation already. And you can imagine what the third derivative will then look like. That would be d3y by dx cubed. The fourth derivative will be d4y by dx4, etc, etc. And the nth derivative will be dny by dxn. So that's the notation for multiple derivatives. And if you're in function notation, then the first derivative would be just f dash x. Uh, second derivative would be f double dash x, f triple dash x, f four dash x, and then f, and then uh, we'll do it to the power of n x, uh, but really that's the nth derivative rather than do the composite function n times. And you know what, uh, what whether it means the composite function uh, notation or the derivative notation just by the context of the question. Okay, so you'll also need to be able to understand the next piece of notation as well. dny by dxn and then in then a subscript of a. And what this means is do the nth differential and then substitute in the value a for x. And sometimes it will be x equals a, or sometimes it will just be an a at the bottom. And, some and you also need to know how to do this in function notation as well. So fn uh, with an a in a bracket means do the nth derivative of the f function and then substitute in a. So for example, if we have d4y by dx4 and then 6 is the subscript, then this means take the y function, differentiate it four times, and then substitute in the value 6. So that's what this notation means. To move on, we also need to know how to differentiate and differentiate confidently as well. So using these following rules, we have the product rule first. So that's when you've got two functions multiplying together, you differentiate one of them, keep the other one the same, and then add the vice versa of that differentiation and keep in the same. The, comp the, um, the quotient rule is where you differentiate the top, keep the bottom the same, minus, keep the top the same, differentiate the bottom, all over the g function squared. This is not the second derivative of g, this is just the g function squared. And also the composite function rule, whereby if you've got one function inside another function, then you differentiate the inside function first, then multiply it by the derivative of the outside function with the g function still inside it. Okay, so product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, you need to know how to do all of those confidently. If you don't, go back and have a practice of these. Okay, so we've got a question then. If y is equal to ln 1 minus x, find the value of d3y by dx3 with a half as the subscript, evaluated at a half. Okay, so let's take the function, and the first thing we need to do is differentiate it three times if we're looking to find this expression. So the first thing we'll do is we will differentiate it using the, one of the Lun rules of differentiation. So one of those rules I didn't go through, but you need to know it for this video really or this exercise, the, the differentiation using the Lun rule, you take the inside of the Lun function, differentiate it, it goes on the top, different, then take the actual function inside the Lun function and put it on the bottom. So it's differential of the middle, put it on the top, take the middle, put it on the bottom. That's differentiating using the Lun rule. Uh, we've That's the first derivative, we need the third one, so let's now move on to the second derivative. It'd probably be easier if we write out this expression here in index notation, so minus, because there's a minus 1 on the top, 1 minus x to the power of minus 1. And that's how we move this 1 minus x into an indice. So we're using the chain rule here to differentiate, so we differentiate the inside of the function first, and that will give us minus 1 and then you differentiate the outside function, and the outside function here is something 
So minus that expression to the power of minus 1, so it's minus x to the minus 1 as the um, outside function, and that will be the minus 1 times into the front to make it positive, then reduce the power by 1 to make it minus 2. Simplify this expression here, and we get minus 1 minus x to the minus 2. We'll write it in index notes, so in a fraction notation here. We need to differentiate once more. So again, we'll rewrite it out in the um, index notation. Then we differentiate the inside first and the outside second. So the inside will be minus 1. The outside will be minus 2. So minus times minus 2 will give us 2. And then reduce the power by 1. So it'll be 1 minus x to the minus 3. And then let's simplify that. The minus 1 multiplying to the front will give us minus 2, 1 minus x to the minus 3. So there we are. That's the third derivative. But to actually answer this question, we now need to substitute in a half. So take our answer to the third derivative and substitute in a half. So put replace x with a half. Do it on your calculator or work it out stage by stage. And you end up at minus 16. So the answer to this question, find the value of this thing here, is minus 16. Moving on to the next one, we have the function which is e to the x squared, and we're asked to show that f dash of x is equal to 2f, 2x, f of x. Okay, let's get started then, so let's differentiate it. This is again using the chain rule. The inside function will be x squared, the outside function will be e to the x. So it's going to be inside first, which will be 2x, so that's the inside function differentiating first. Then the outside function, the outside function is just e to the x, which differentiates to itself, so that's why we've just got it on its own uh, again at the back. We need to show it's equal to this thing though, so we've got the f dash of x at the front, that's fine. We've got the 2x, that's fine, but now we need f of x here. Why would f of x go at the back? Well, because the back expression is equal to f of x, as it says, it is above. So we can then replace the e to the x squared with f of x, and that's shown our answer to part a. So we've done part a. Excellent. As we can see there, the e to the x squared is f of x because it says it is above there. So we've just replaced it in with f of x. Let's move on to part b. By differentiating the result twice more with respect to x, find f double dash of x, the second derivative, and f triple dash x, the third derivative. So let's take the derivative then. So let's take our answer to part a and differentiating it. We've got two expressions here that are multiplying together. That's 2x and f of x. They're multiplying together, so we need to use the product rule. So one part is 2x, the other part is f of x. Let's differentiate them both. 2x differentiates to 2, and then f of x differentiates to f dash of x. And then with the product rule, remember, you keep one the same uh, and differentiate the other one. So it's a bit of a kind of cross multiplying here, 2 times f of x, and then add 2x f dash of x. And then we differentiate it again. So this is f triple dash of x. Um, so where the first one is just going to be a simple derivative because it's just 2 times f of x. Differentiate this and differentiate this part here, and you just get 2 times the derivative, which is f dash of x. And then this part here, we've got the product rule coming in because it's 2x and then f dash of x. So again, we're on the product rule for 2x f dash of x. So we've got 2x and f dash of x. We've got two parts to it. 2x will differentiate to 2, and f dash of x will differentiate to f double dash x. So we'll do the product rule on that, so it'll be 2x f double dash x, and then add, then multiply the other way around, 2f dash x. And we can simplify this, we've got two lots of 2f da, da, dash x. <clears throat> so f triple dash x simplified will be 2x f double dash x plus 4f dash x. And lovely, by differentiating the result twice more, uh, with respect to x, find this thing here, great. So we've got this answer here, and we've got this answer here as the answer 
to part B. If you wanted to write it in terms of the um, Leibniz notation, which is dy by dx, uh, then you're very welcome to do so, but that's not what it's asking for in the question. It's asking you to use the function notation. This is what it would equivalently be in the Leibniz notation of dy by dx. The reason I'm saying it's the Leibniz notation is because it was not Newton who formalized this notation. It was um, someone Leibniz. And you'll be using the product rule a lot in this uh, chapter. Uh, part C is deduce F0, so F naught, um, F dash naught, F double dash naught, and f triple dash naught. Uh, this is building the building blocks for using the Maclaurin series in the next video. So take your f of 0, take your f of x and put 0 into it. So we're replacing x with 0 here. So it's going to be f of 0 equals e to the 0 squared. 0 squared is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So the first uh, answer to part c is 1. f of 0 is 1. Then we'll move on to f dash of x, where we have to substitute in 0. So it's going to be 2 lots of 0 times f of 0. It doesn't really matter what f of 0 is. We're timesing it by 0, so it's going to give us an answer of 0 anyway. So f dash of 0 is 0. So we've got two parts to this answer so far. We've got two more to go, f double dash of 0 and f triple dash of 0. F double dash of zero, just a reminder from part B, was this expression here. So we can use our answers from before to answer this, and we'll just substitute in zero in as x. So substituting in zero as x, we get 2f of zero plus 2 lots of zero times f dash of zero. Because we're multiplying by zero here, this bit would just disappear, and we've got f of zero here, which is 1. So the answer to part, kind of the third part of part C, will be. Two. So we've done the third part, we've now got one more part to go, which is the third derivative, which is going to be, well, that's supposed to be a big X down here. Uh, two times X multiplied by F double dash of X plus F dash of X. Substitute zero into all of them when we can use the previous answers. The first part, that would just be zero because we're multiplying by zero here. And then F dash of zero is zero anyway. So both of these components are zero. Zero plus zero is zero. So F triple dash of X, that's not supposed to be a power. Uh, is equal to zero. So lovely, we've done all four parts of part C there. Okay, so your turn to have a go at some questions now, just these two questions here. Pause the video and have a go at these two questions. Okay, so let's have a go at part A then. Part A is looking for us to differentiate three times. So if we've got the first part is f of x equals x squared e to the minus x. We're differentiating using the product rule here. So the first derivative is going to be 2x e to the minus x minus x squared e to the minus x. So I differentiated the x squared first and then left the e to the minus x alone and then did the vice versa in the next bit. Let's differentiate it again, so we'll differentiate this bit this time, so 2e to the minus x. Differentiate the 2x that time and left the second bit alone, but then it's going to be minus 2x e to the minus x. And then differentiate the back bit, that's going to be plus x squared e to the minus x, and then minus 2x e to the minus x. And we could simplify this to 2e to the minus x, uh, minus 4x e to the minus x plus x squared e to the minus x. So that's the first derivative. The second derivative, we now need the third derivative. So in this case, it's going to be f triple dash. The first bit is just going to be minus 2e to the minus x. The second bit is going to be minus 4 e to the minus x, and then plus 4x e to the minus x. 
And the last bit will be 2x, add 2x e to the minus x, minus x squared e to the minus x. <clears throat> so simplifying this all together, we're going to get minus 6 e to the minus x. Then it's going to be, we will get plus 6x e to the minus x. And then it's going to be minus x squared e to the minus x, which is exactly equal to what we want to show, e to the minus x bracket, uh, 6x minus 6 minus x squared. And there we are, that's the answer to part A. And then show that f4 dashes times 2 is equal to 0. Well, we need to differentiate it again in that case, so 1, 2, 3, 4, lots of x. So differentiate the one part of it, which will just be minus e to the minus x, bracket 6x minus 6 minus x squared, and then differentiate the second bit, which will be plus e to the minus x. We'll keep that bit the same, and then differentiate this bit, so that'll be 6 minus 2x. And now we need to put in 2, so f1, 2, 3, 4 dashes, then a 2, and now 2 is going to go in, so it'll be minus e to the minus 2, lots of 12 minus 6 minus 4, and then add e to the minus 2, lots of uh, 6 minus 2 times 2 is 4. Let's simplify this together, it's going to be minus e to the minus 2, lots of 6, so that would be 2, and then it would be plus e to the minus 2 of 2, and you can see here that these two things will cancel out, because one's a positive, one's a negative, so this thing equals 0, so lovely. We've shown it in nice, easy, small chunks of steps uh, that f4 dashes of 2, or the fourth derivative evaluated at 2, will equal 0. So there we are, that's the answer to question 4 from the exercise 2b. Make sure you pause the video and now have a go at the questions from exercise 2b on page 39. Make sure you have a go at the exam style questions, the um, problem solving ones, and then we get to move on to Maclaurin series where we get to use all of the skills that we've learnt in this video. Thanks very much for watching.